Hey, how's it going YouTube? It's Elvin Ninja 7 your resident Miss Weaver Monk, and today I just want to say a quick special thank you guys to uh, to getting me to 1k subs. I mean, you guys killed it. Uh, you guys started pushing at the end and really pushed to get me to 1k, so I really thank you guys. Uh, it means a ton to me. I even shed a tear, but um, yeah, so let's get into this video. What is today's video? A lot of you have been asking about my UI, my setup, my weak ores, all that. Uh, so I just wanted to give you a special thank you and just give it all to you, honestly. So, um, and also it will help me because if anyone asks, I can just reference this video and, and say, hey, go check out the description. So uh, I, I do want to say I'm going to be going through it and I'm going to be giving it to you. So, I mean, you could just simply download it, but... Um, the best thing that you guys can do is stay because I'm just going to be uh, explaining kind of how to use it. But then also if something happens in the future, like if they update something or change a talent like they've been doing, um, I'm going to show you how to kind of update that and just tweak it a little bit to make it more personalized for yourself. So let's go ahead and get into it. I don't like making intros long. Uh, so first, I do want to quickly say if you need to figure out how to run add-ons, there's this thing called Curse Forge, and it's great for doing that. Um, it's just a place to download add-ons, um, and you download them here so you can search them up. See, I have all these down here, um, and then you can, oh, sorry, you search them up, and then you download them, and then you can, when you reload your game, there is a tab here for add-ons. That's not the right button. Add-ons right here, and then you just click which ones you want to load. Um, so that's that. That's Curse Forge. Um, and then let's get into which actual add-ons I use. So I use Grid 2. Now, if you see up here, this is the standard UI for, for people in your party. And I see my people are leaving. Um, but that is the standard UI. And you can kind of barely make some adjustments here. And it's just not that great. Um, but what I use is Grid 2. And now it looks like just these little squares. And I'm sure you see people using these all the time or something similar. Um, but it's very helpful because you can make them colored for each class so you know like which person you're healing, which is like a little not important. But you can make it to where like the tank is always at the top. You can make it to where the tank's always at the top. You're right next to the tank and then everyone else. So like if you need to, if you know there's a tank buster coming up, you know where your mouse goes. So it's just like it's good to um, build like muscle memory, but um, it's just very clean. But in order to get maximum effectiveness from it, Oh, and you can also make it go vertical and horizontal, uh, but I have mine vertical currently just because I feel like it's a little cleaner. But if you want to get the maximum value out of Grid 2, you need to download a profile because at first, base Grid 2, it's just big clunky squares. Like the squares are this big and you won't see which hots are on each person. So I use the questionably epic live 2.0 profile. Now, what that is, is you can come into Grid2 by typing slash Grid2, if it'll load, and you can go to Profiles, and you can import a profile right here, Import Export, and you'll be able to import the profile that I have down in the description below called Questionably Epic Live 2.0, um, and that is this one, and watch when I apply my hots to myself, you see the image and they tick down, and it's just it's just a way to see like which hots are in everyone, and Questionably Epic is one of the best healing supporting websites out there. It's how healers sim, basically, um, their gear. So uh, this is just this is just really nice. It's very well equipped. Uh, so that's what I use. Um, and then, so that's Grid 2. But you also want to pair it with Click. Click is another add-on. It is spelled like C-L-I-Q-U-E. And what that does is if you have someone in your party that you need to heal, um, this is a very healer-specific thing. Say I have someone in my party, say this guy's in my party, if I want to heal him, I would have to click him, and then now that he is my target, any heal that I do will kind of go into him. But click makes it to where you don't have to click. I know the name is kind of clever, so you know what, we like that. But um, So what, what it means is I just basically hover my mouse over their party frame. If I had someone in my party and I wasn't using Grid 2, I would have to do the, the base UI over here, bring my mouse all the way over here. Another reason to get Grid 2. Um, but I just hover my mouse over it and then press the button and it'll heal that person. If it's someone else, I'll hover my mouse over them and heal them. I was hoping those people would stay for the video, but um, shout outs to them because they were willing to stay, but then they ended up leaving. 
but yeah, so it's really helpful because it just saves you having to click everyone every time you want to heal someone. So, um, it's just, and it's just really nice. It feels really smooth the first time you download it. Um, let's see how to make each spell clickable. Clickable is when you go open up your spell book, you'll see this click binding configuration. And then if you want to bind a spell, um, you just click bind spell and then it'll open up this thing where the next button you press while hovering over a spell will make it bindable. So let's say I wanted to bind Path of the Grand Magistrix. I don't know. Um, I would just hover over it and press like one and that would bind it to one. Anytime that I hover over someone's uh, profile, you would, you would press one and it would cast that spell. So that's that. And um, it's really helpful if, for example, I use the, the number four for my renewing mist when I hover over someone. But when I'm not hovered over someone, I have it just bound in the game to spinning crane kick. My four is spinning crane kick and uh, a renewing mist. So it's very helpful in that sense. So click in grid two, power duo. Um, but then details, details, I'm sure you've heard of this. Um, it is these two boxes. It, it lets you see who has done what amount of healing and what amount of uh, let's look at this Kurog kill. So like uh, you can see the damage meters and that's this is what people refer to with meters. I'm sure you guys know that. But it's also this little box up here. Whenever I cast a spell, you can have it apply this box to see what you've cast. And it's very helpful, helpful for Mistweaver monks because um, we're very, if we're punching and kicking, like say that we're in the middle of lust, um, it's very helpful to be able, to, if we can't hear that. I don't know if you guys go off audio cues, but it's nice to see how many spells we've cast and like how many tiger palms i just cast did i do three tiger palms for some reason like it's just helpful um but the main event of this video those are the three um super easy to explain um add-ons next up is weak auras so weak auras let me type it out weak auras is honestly it's just like it can do anything um it's basically everything else that you see on my screen um and it's what people use in the middle of like boss fights that is just insane um that, that you can make it do anything honestly so that is this whole big portion here and this is how i just keep track of what spells are off cooldown um all my major spells i have here on some of my other classes like i have my defensives and stuns but here i'm just like so used to them because uh, i play mistweaver so much that i just took them off to to save clutter but you can even add icons for like your 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 leg sweep and your your fortifying brew just all of your other buttons if you wanted to but i just try to keep it as concise as possible you can even add a glow when things are off cooldown um for like the important spells right here this is that uh vivacious vivification so anytime that i have that proc where i can like hit an instant vivify um i do this but it's helpful if you play other classes like the best example is like druid if if you want to know exactly once your wild growth comes off cooldown because why wouldn't you press that button? It's so good. Um, you just put a glow on it. And I used to do this back in Shadowlands. I would put a glow on refreshing Jade Wind because we would press that off cooldown. So it was just nice to just be like, oh, it's off cooldown. Like, show me. Like, put it right in front of my face. Make it glow. Um, so, Weak Auras, the menu is very intimidating. And, guys, it has taken so long to get to get used to using Weak Auras. Um, and creating them, but I have just been testing around with stuff and making so much stuff recently. And like, uh, I've made a, a big week or a package for each of the classes that I play, like um, Survival Hunter, uh, Blood DK, Resto Druid, Resto Shaman, Discipline Priest. So um, it's just nice to just have everything how you like to view it. So we have our health bar that is super easy to make. Um, let's go ahead and open up this Mistweaver UI. This contains the large chunk of this, but this little bar is in this one, and I will have these all down in, in the description. And then this GG thing, this whole GG thing is sick. So I will get into that. It is right here. Um, but we have the basics are a little health bar that keeps track of our health, um, and then a mana bar, and then we have icons for everything. So how you would do that is health bar, you can set it to trigger off of a unit, which is us, the player's health. It's that simple. And then you can kind of adjust where the text is by going down here in display to um, to the text. You can make it slide to the middle if you like that, or on the right side. You can make it um, show a percentage. You can just change it a couple ways like that. Let's see. Okay. Um, so, and then for the icons, you can have them tick down how you want them. You can make them go tick down how I have it, where it's 
it starts out all does it start out all black and then become the full color once it's off cooldown um you can do things like uh i have right now my shaloon's gift it'll actually show how many stacks we have so if i were to get into combat which i i, I can't right now it'll it'll tick up and um you'll see a number here like at the bottom right corner and it'll show you how many stacks you have and then once it gets to 10 you could add a glow um, but I am still working on trying to figure that out because I think you have to do some uh, fancy trigger. I don't know. But, um, yeah, you can you can basically just tweak it how you want it. You see I have the number of charges here showing of Renewing Mist, which you will find soon is very redundant. I need to take that off. Soothing Mist, I have no idea why it's on here. So <laughs> you guys can change that to make that. Maybe that should be the Fortifying Brew and Leg Sweep. That's actually really smart. Uh, I should go and do that. And same with Enveloping Mist. You don't need to know when that's off cooldown because all three of these spells are always off cooldown except for Renewing Mist. I just have another weak aura that does that so so it's really simple uh to change what spell so say that they get rid of completely feline stomp you would come in here which i need to take this one off um and you would just come down to the trigger i have it triggered um to show the spell feline stomp and you could just change that spell to like let's say leg sweep you just type it in here hit enter um, really simple stuff. Uh, since I've kind of put it together for you, all you have to do is just make slight adjustments for the future. Um, so like when Shailen's Gift came out, I, I think I changed the Bone Dust Brew one to say Shailen's Gift, and now it's just there where Bone Dust Brew used to be. Um, but yeah, this is very helpful. I have both my T's here. You can kind of move them. I have like a Trinket slot. That's why IQD is here, but right now I'm not, I'm not using a, an unused Trinket. Um, so you can kind of change that to what you want. And then um, just if you're running different talents, I would recommend not replacing these. I want you to see this right here, Yulon. And uh, this is kind of the, the edit window. So Yulon is right here. But when I close it, Chiji's right there because I have two separate icons in the same spot. So I have the Chiji one there and the Yulon one in the same exact spot. Same would apply for back in Shadowlands. Right here where Feline Stomp is, I also had Weapons of Order, Fallen Order. I had all of them in that same slot. So when I would change my talent, or change my covenant, um, it would just change to that. And that one would kind of be showing over the other one. Um, so don't get rid of these if, if you want to change a talent or if you use different talents than I do. Just just put the icon in, in front of that. Hopefully that makes sense. Um, but yeah, and you can just, uh, while you're in here, while you have this uh, group open, the Mistweaver UI group open, if you wanted to add an icon or a bar or something of that sort, so you would just do new aura. And it would it would add it to this group, um, but if you want it added to a, a different group or added make a new thing altogether, you would just do new aura while you have that closed. Um, so that is that group. Um, hopefully you guys uh, like it because I, I've got a lot of people that asked for that. So hopefully that was a good explanation. If if things change in the future, and you can always come to my comments and ask me, and I'll I'll hopefully be able to answer some questions. Uh, but now I want to get into the really quick those two bars that renewing mist group. Um, these these little groups are always a little weird to um, to like code. I don't know if you can call it coding. Uh, I mean I don't personally go in and write the code always. I just kind of tinker around with the settings. Um, but I have it triggered to renewing mist. So these are my two renewing mist charges. Um, and whenever one comes off cool or whenever I use one this bar will be depleted and it'll slowly fill up with the timer of its cooldown so it's just really helpful visualization of how many renewing mists I need to apply how many I have to apply and, and it's just I, I love this week or I ever since I kind of had the idea to do this um, this was like the first week or I made I just haven't got off of it it's so good um, because I just wasn't looking here. I don't know why. Uh, this is just a helpful visual representation. We have to come into the charges. Um, if trigger one has a count of two, then I don't know what, I, I honestly don't know what I did. I, I just tinkered around with this, but here is the settings. Um, and, and also for all these weak ores, you can set them to load only while you're on your Mistweaver by doing this. So hopefully, hopefully that helps, but it's just it's honestly such a useful thing and it's also you can kind of apply to this or apply this to other classes like one class that i kind of took this and kind of mirrored it um is uh affliction warlock so like they have soul shards which is like they have five little chi points if you want to think of them like that 
Um, and I also did it for cheap points for Windwalker. I don't know why I didn't just say that one, but uh, you just have five of these bars instead of two, and it's really nice to see how many chi points or soul shards that you have. Um, so that is that. Those are those bars, and I have them kind of. You have. I had to make a separate group. I don't know why it wouldn't let me. It wouldn't work, but I spent like hours tinkering with it, so I probably tried everything um, to keep it in that same Mistweaver UI group. But those are the renewing mist chargers that will be down in the description below. And then let's get into this Chi G one. This one is sick. It's probably my favorite. Um, you guys saw it in my last video and I had so many comments uh, for my week auras. So now I will get in the combat. I didn't want to do it earlier because I get so sidetracked. Um, so we have our Chi G stacks and it is this bar here that says Chi G and then these three stacks. And these kind of work like that renewing mist group. Um, so as you know Chi G, every time you uh, punch and kick while you have it out, you gain a little stack and you can get up to three stacks. That's why there were three of those little bars and um, cash those in for a reduced cost or uh, an increased effectiveness of an enveloping miss. So I did a horrible job explaining that, but let me show you. So I have Chi G out. That is the timer, what this bar is. And then if I do three kicks, you see I'm gaining every kick a stack. And then it, may, it shows you how many stacks of that improvement to enveloping this you have. And then once TG ends, you stop gaining stacks. And see, it is a 66% a more effective thing. Oh, and also, now that I'm here, I can show you these Shailun gift stacks. We have five because we were in combat for 20 seconds, maybe. I don't know. Bad. Don't do math <laughs> live. But yeah, so that is the TG week where it's really sick. I will have that also down below. Um, and then last thing is this T cursor tracker. I did not make this one. I downloaded this one off of Wagio. That's W A G dot I O. And that is a great source for weak ours. Everyone who makes them can kind of go upload them and then people can download them. And that's where I'm going to be linking from, uh, for all of mine. But, uh, this T cursor tracker, I don't know where I found it. Um, that I guess there's its link on screen. But it's really cool and it's really helpful when you use these talents, um, like the T of Plenty and T of Serenity, and then also this Focused Thunder. It'll just show you, once you press Thunder Focus T, how many um, buttons you have to press. If it's specific ones, it will show you those specific ones. But if not, it'll show you a T that's just like a general use T stack that you have um, for your next button that can be improved. and. It's really cool because it's on your cursor. So if I use Thunder Focus T, see it's on my cursor. So it's just really nice when you're in the middle of a fight, like here on uh, your party frames or raid frames, to be able to see like what buttons can I press that can be improved. Um, and then like how many Thunder Focus T charges do I have? Like if, I, if I'm running Focus Thunder, if I have two, it'll show two, but then you use it and it goes away. So <laughs> it's really cool. Hopefully this helps. I mean, these week cores I have spent hours on, so all together, this video took like countless hours. I, I'll just tweak and adjust and try to make it as much as perfect as I want it. And um, I'm really happy with it. It has honestly helped me out a ton. Just being able to see all of my spells and have them all in one concise location on the screen centralized instead of here where, um, I don't know, the, the base UI, I tried it. You can see my first video of Dragonfly. I tried it. I gave a good honest shot, but then I just came right back here because it has everything. Um, so yeah, that is my week chorus. I know you guys have been asking for that. Um, and hopefully when you kind of look at how I made some of these, you can go back and make some yourself. So like I would say, try to make that Chi G one, but try to make it for Yulon instead and try to see if you can see, uh, make a week or for how many like enveloping mists or renewing mists you have out because those definitely exist. And if you don't want to make them yourself, you can go to wag.io and get them yourself. But um, that is it. That is my whole UI. That's what I've loved doing uh, and using for the past like two years. And I've gotten a lot of questions about it. And I just wanted to quickly say thank you and put out this video for you guys and give you all of my resources all up front, which is probably a dumb idea. I see other YouTubers kind of gatekeeping behind a Discord or, or um, subscribing through like Patreon or something. But, you know, I do all of this and I haven't made a single penny so far. Now that I'm at a thousand subscribers, that might change. But I just want to say thank you guys so much for getting me there and let's keep going because I am not stopping anytime soon. 
I love making these videos, and I really hope to one day be able to do this full time. So um, hopefully you guys got something from this, and uh, I will go ahead and be making my next video, but I will see you guys in that video, and take care.